intermolecular forces, or IMFs, are incredibly important to biomolecules. In this particular video, we will focus on proteins and on the secondary structure of proteins. We're talking about secondary structure of proteins. I wanted to remind you of the four levels of protein structure. There is the primary protein sequence, and this primary protein sequence is just which amino acids are covalent bonded to which amino acids. Um, and so if you look at the primary sequence, it looks like beads on a string, where each one of these beads is an individual amino acid. If you look at the secondary structure of a protein, what this is, is the local folding of the polypeptide chain into alpha helices and beta sheets. So alpha helices and beta sheets are the main two types of protein secondary structure that we'll focus on. There's the tertiary structure of a protein, which is the three-dimensional folded biologically relevant form of the protein. And for proteins that have multiple subunits, there's the quaternary structure, which describes how those multiple subunits come together. For us to talk about protein secondary structure, for us to talk about protein secondary structure, I want to first talk about the individual monomers that make up a protein. And these are the amino acids. And so if you look here, you can see what the structure of an individual amino acid is. It's it has an amino group. This amino group is connected to a carbon. This is called the C alpha, which is connected to the side chain, which I've depicted here as R. And C alpha is also connected to a carboxylic acid. What's shown here in the rectangle is the backbone of the amino acid. Um, and that's separated from uh, what's circled here, which is the side chain. As we talk about protein secondary structure, we're gonna be focused only on the backbone of the protein and we're gonna ignore the side chains for now. For a protein to form, amino acids come together and they form a new covalent bond. And so what I've shown over here on the right is uh, a dipeptide. So two proteins have come together and the new covalent bond that's formed is the bond that's right here. It's called a peptide bond. It's also an amide bond. And so if you look at this figure, we've got one amino acid here, and we've got the second amino acid here. We've got the N terminus of the dipeptide here, which is the free amino group. We've got the C terminus here, which is the free carboxylic acid. So we'll talk about N terminus and C terminus of proteins. If we go back and look at this new bond that's formed, there's a couple of things that I want to point out that are going to be really important as we start to talk about protein secondary structure. We've got a carbonyl oxygen here, which is an excellent hydrogen bond acceptor. We have an amide NH here, which is an excellent hydrogen bond donor. And these backbone carbonyl oxygens and amide NHs are going to be key players in protein secondary structure. The first type of protein secondary structure that we're going to talk about are alpha helices. And I've shown two depictions of an alpha helix here, the one on the left in more detail than the one on the right. So let's look at, to, at the alpha helix on the left and get oriented. We've got the N terminus of the protein down here at the bottom. We've got the C terminus of the protein up here at the top. And if we look at this, it's in the shape of a helix. Each of these turns, of the helix is 3.6 amino acids. And if we look at what holds these terms together, it's backbone hydrogen bonding. So we have a backbone carbonyl oxygen here that's hydrogen bonded to a backbone amide NH here. We've got a carbonyl, a backbone carbonyl oxygen here, which is hydrogen bonded to a backbone amide NH here. We've got a backbone carbonyl oxygen here hydrogen bonded to an amide NH here. And if we look at this in a little more detail, if this is amino acid one, the amide NH that it's hydrogen bonded to is four along the chain, so it's amino acid five. If this is amino acid two, the hydrogen bond goes to amino acid six. And so all of these hydrogen bonds along the chain serve to strengthen the alpha helix. 
The second type of secondary structure that we're going to talk about is a beta sheet. And beta sheets can come in two different configurations. They can be parallel, which I've shown here on the left, or they can be anti-parallel. And beta sheets are composed of individual strands that are hydrogen bonded together. In the parallel beta sheet on the left, I've shown three strands that are hydrogen bonded together, and the same with the anti-parallel beta sheet on the right. If you look at the parallel beta sheet, it, the first strand goes from N to C, the second strand goes from N to C, the third strand goes from N to C. So all of those strands run in the same orientation. And because those do, that's the definition of parallel. If you look at the anti-parallel, the first strand goes from N to C, the second strand goes from C to N, which is the opposite orientation, and then the third strand is back to N to C. And so because not all of those strands are in the same orientation, that by definition is anti-parallel. Okay, in each of these cases, what holds together the individual strands in the sheet is backbone hydrogen bonding. So if we look at this parallel beta sheet, we've got a backbone amide NH here in the first strand that's hydrogen bonded to a backbone carbonyl oxygen in the second strand. We've got a backbone carbonyl oxygen in the first strand, hydrogen bonded to an amide NH backbone in the second strand, and all the way down. If we look at the anti-parallel beta sheets, it's really similar. In the first strand, we have an amide NH hydrogen bonded to a carbonyl oxygen in the second strand. We've got a backbone carbonyl oxygen in the first strand, hydrogen bonded to an amide NH in the second strand, and all the way down. So these hydrogen bonds hold together the individual strands in the sheet. If you look at these topologies a little bit closer, you can see that the hydrogen bonds are a little bit different. Um, the orientation in particular is different. The bond angles, the lengths are different, and that means the, the strengths and stabilities are different. If we take a look at proteins, proteins can be composed of either all alpha helices or all beta sheets or a combination of alpha helices and beta sheets. I've shown you ubiquitin in this picture, uh, which is a protein that's a mixed protein that has alpha helices and beta sheets. And I've shown this as a ribbon diagram. And in a ribbon diagram, what's true is that beta sheets are shown as arrows. So this is one strand of a beta sheet here. This is the second strand of a beta sheet here. This is the third strand of a beta sheet here. And what's shown in red is the hydrogen bonds that are holding those strands together into a beta sheet. Ubiquitin also has alpha helices, and alpha helix is shown over here on the right. Um, and again, what's holding together the alpha helices are those hydrogen bonds. So as we talk about protein secondary structure, we're talking about hydrogen bonds between backbone amide NHs and carbonyl oxygens being the main forces that uh, provide for the stability of these types of secondary structure.